Hi everyone, we are Fiducia Edge. Fiducia Edge is a cybersecurity company which focuses on IoT security, also the Edge company security. So as we know, we have nowadays we have a lot of smart industry applications, including new applications and also new uh, new devices, new IoT service. <clears throat> but actually, those kind of the new stuff actually create a new weak link in the cybersecurity. How serious? For example, for the IoT cyber attacks, it actually grows 66% in a year, which is the number one growth rate. And most of the uh, security methods, including the VPN, the firewall, is not able to put down loads of the small devices, which we call the IoT gateway and also the edge servers, because they are too small and too weak. They are not allowing those kind of servers to run on it. To solve this kind of problem, Fiducia Edge, we gather a lot of the talents and also the professionals to build this company. We come up with Fiducia Edge uh, FECP, also the Trust Anchor service. To not only, uh, so for FECP is a middleware to protect the Edge computing service, and for the Trust Anchor, it's a service to protect the IoT service. We can not only secure the system for the security, but also we can achieve the data privacy, which is allowed us to fulfill the GDPR compliance. For Fiducia Edge, our things can run on mostly all the mainstream hardware platforms. And if you don't have platforms, that's okay. We can provide the total solution, including the hardware, also the software. We have already <coughs> input our technology in a lot of the national uh, construction, including for governments and also for the big companies including Taiwan and Hong Kong's smart lamp post, the highway monitor systems, uh, the roadside park, uh, park, uh, parking units, a lot, including the smart manufacturing, HAI, also the hospitals. So for Fiducia, we are not only the follower of the, uh, the standards. Instead, we are the leadings of the standards. Also, we have a lot of the great and strong business partner in Taiwan and also in the global countries. And we are hoping for your enjoy. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the Taiwan Tech Arena Pavilion here live at Innovex 2023. Today, we have a session called Meeting TTA Startups, and with us today, we have Fiducia Edge. And today with us, the representative from Fiducia Edge is the BD manager, Owen. Thank you so much for joining us today, Owen. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for the wonderful pitch you just delivered earlier today. So my job, in, in short, is to introduce um, your company, but also let you tell us a little bit more about what you guys do. Okay. So this is a chance for the, the passing by audience to listen to what your company does, but also for the viewers online to get a feel of what I see, you do. I see. So uh, could you just, first of all, the name is very special, Fiducia hmm. Edge. I, 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 I sense there is something special about Fiducia. Yes, so Fiducia Edge, so the word Fiducia is actually Latino. So that is mean the trust. So Fiducia Edge means trust edge, which is what we are doing is the cybersecurity and the trustworthy in the edge computing. So that is why the, uh, where the names come from. Okay, yeah, so that definitely makes sense. Make sure that your name also refers to what you deliver, of right? Course, and of what course. you focus. Thank you. So in short, if you could give a general description that everyone, even a new beginner coming mm. to technology that doesn't have a lot of experience in the technology world, mm. they can understand what does Fiducia Edge do? Okay. Could you do that? Okay. So frankly speaking, uh, everyone knows we are now uh, living in a smart city era, which means we have a lot of new AI, new IoT service, a lot of new stuff. Yep. But most of the, uh, mo uh, the most of the new stuff is actually creating the new weak points in the cybersecurity. Uh, and it's not really easy to defend them in the, for example, in firewall or in VPN, those kind of the old methods. Mostly because like these kind of the device is actually not that big as the server, not that big as a computer. It's kind of weak compared to the the big machines. So there's no really they're not really uh, uh, able to deploy the heavy load cybersecurity stuff on it. But this is really dangerous because you are not putting this in your room, you are putting this on the road, on the traffic light, 
on the smart lamp post on the factory fail site. So these are the really valuable for hackers because it is easy to attack. And the, the effect can, uh, is kind of the same for hackers to attack this and attack your servers. But this is much more easier for that. Yeah, because this is accessible, right? As yep. you say, for, for smart city, the, the crucial part is that these are installed around the city in different yep. locations. But these often are uh, public accessible locations. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's right, that's right. So, currently, um, your company then develops the cybersecurity solution for this kind of, yes. of uh, hardware, right? Yeah. Is that is that correctly understood? Yes, yeah, yeah. you can put it that way. Okay. So currently, you're present in the Taiwanese market, right? Do mm -hmm. you have any existing partners here in Taiwan already that where you have implemented your service? Uh, actually, we have done a lot of uh, business with not only the big company but also the government. Uh, as what uh, I, I think some of the people know that uh, behind the Taipei City Government Hall. There's a project named uh, 5G, uh, Taiwan 5G Smart Pole Standards, okay. which is actually the Taiwanese version next generation of the Smart Lamp Post. Okay. Which uh, is the features actually include the 5G, the, the whole area Wi Fi, uh, IP cam on it, and a lot of IoT sensors, a lot of the new sensors, and also a lot of the edge computing. Which is, it basically is the critical infrastructure for the smart cities. Put so, so, so the one behind Taipei City Hall. So it's called 5G Smart Pole. Smart Pole. Yep. So this is a critical structure here in Taiwan. Yep. Oh, in Taipei City that controls the smart city infrastructure here in Taipei City. Yes, the okay. pole itself is the infrastructure. Okay, and it's all collected in one point. Yep. And therefore, of course, it needs. Cybersecurity. <laughs> you're right about that. So currently, you're working with Taipei City Government, correct? Yes, yes. What yes. about other uh, governments in in Taiwan? Mm, it's not uh, because Taipei is actually a pilot city in Taiwan, uh, like everyone knows. Yeah. So all the all the best and the newest technology will start from Taipei. Uh, I think that's a without question. Testing it out yeah, in Taipei yeah. first, so yeah, Taiwan, as you say, or Taipei is the pilot city here in yes. Taiwan. So a lot of things like uh, even I think Kaohsiung is also catching up on that, oh, right? Yes, we are also deploying the same stuff in the Ya, uh, the Asian Bay, the Yawan. Yeah. Yawan. Yes. Yeah. yeah Yawan. Asian place yes. in Kaohsiung. For so for that, uh, we are actually uh, cooperate with another big. Uh, I'm not sure whether can I read their name because of the NDA, but yeah. we actually uh, cooperate with the big company and we will deploy the. Smart pole in Yawan also. Okay, so currently uh, Fiducia Edge is present in two cities here in Taiwan, mm -hmm. right? For government cooperation. So yes, one is in Taipei, where you do the Taipei City Hall or Taipei City Smart Infrastructure. Yep. You are helping to secure that for cyber, right? Yes. Cyber attacks. And then you are launching right now in Kaohsiung. There is no need to mention the name. I do understand this is a sensitive <laughs> issue. Later on when you guys make the official announcement or it's, it's uh, you know, later on in the process, maybe you will be able to share that. For the moment, let's keep it, uh, yeah, let's Thank keep it much. under Thank the wraps for, for that. But it's exciting to hear that you guys are also going to be part of a Kaohsiung and launching in Kaohsiung because I think um, Taipei and Kaohsiung are the pilot cities here in Taiwan. I think for Taipei, of course, a lot of uh, new things I remember with the biking lanes, with the 5G infrastructure, MRT, everything is usually tested out in Taipei first. It's, it's they're quick to implement, and I think Kaohsiung is usually the next step. Yeah. And um, sorry. I think uh, when, when you consider Kaohsiung in terms of Taipei, which city do you think it's easier to implement? Uh, still need to be in Taipei. Yes. It's not only because of the, of course, if you were talking about the landfill, Kaohsiung is bigger. But in Taipei, we are the first. We are uh, actually we are near from with uh, nearby Xinzhou. Yeah. So all the components, all the suppliers is kind of much near mm. with Taipei. And also mm. Taipei got uh, more resource, and everyone is much more acceptable for the new technology. Also, the big companies headquarters they, they are in Taipei. Mm. So this kind of the security issue actually is much more easy to deploy with top down instead of bottom up. Yeah. So that is why I will Does that have something to do with the collection or the balance of uh, local companies with international companies here in Taipei? 
Because I think there's a lot of headquarters, like right, we have Google, we have a lot of foreign mm -hmm. international uh, headquarters here in Taipei as well. That is a good point, actually, because uh, a lot we know that there's a trend in the international uh, industry we call the clean cybersecurity supply chain, which means. We have uh, in Taiwan. We have a lot of the company, big company. They are exporting their products to the global market, but their customer will start asking uh, asking them to uh, to import their uh, sorry to improve their cybersecurity on their products. For example, the IPC company, the the network company. Most most of the their customer will start to ask them, but. Because a lot of Taiwan company, we actually provide hardware, so it's not easy for them to come across to cybersecurity. So that's why. Yeah. No, I, I understand that. So, so the point is, a lot of international customers or international companies yes. now have a, requ a requirement for their yeah. suppliers or for their supply chain as well to secure that yep. against cybersecurity. But as Taiwan is is have been for for quite some time, uh, hardware based, software based, it's about yeah, you yeah, know yeah, this yeah. kind of component manufacturing. Um, so it can be harder for you to secure that, right? Is that because of the, the nature of the, the, the field? Like hardware is just by nature harder to secure? Yes, by nature, because uh, first, the computing power is weak, which means we are not, there's no spare computing power for the like firewall, VPN, those kind of the IT security stuff. Yeah. So that's the first one. The second one is those of the device they were not put in the, they were not put in the server room. They will not be guarded by people. They are just spread everywhere. Mm. So let and third, those devices actually often be import with with some unknown device. For example, the camera from China or something yeah. like that. Okay. So so to say that no matter where the components come from, sometimes in Taiwan it's not the first stop in the supply chain. So let's say we have a hardware company who gets their parts from another country. Mm -hmm. uh, another country. They get some of their parts from another country, mm -hmm. then assemble here and add on new components, and then send for it. It can be hard as the middle part of the supply chain to secure because you don't know where the the, the first step in the supply chain, where the components came from. Is that uh, it? Perhaps I have misexplained it. It's mm -hmm. actually for those kind of hardware. It's because we are the uh, sorry the software based company, so it's. It's not an issue for us to secure the unknown devices yes. as long as it has some basic requirement. For example, okay. you need to at least get a CPU, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Understood. So, first of all, I think it's always interesting. Even though I don't, I don't necessarily think you misexplained it, but this is what we always like to also mm. encourage startups to do: is to have a talk with people who are not necessarily an expert in what you do, mm. because they tend to ask questions that. You know, people will think, oh, but that's given, right? You should know that. But that's the thing. That's what makes it so interesting and makes a company like Fiducia Edge, when you just look at the title, honestly, for, for someone who is not a technology expert as myself, when I see the title, I get kind of intimidated, right? <laughs> you know, Secure Edge Computing Solution Provider. I'm thinking that's a lot of words in that's one sentence. Stuff, right? And what does that really mean? Okay. And I think... And I think that's also the interesting thing, for example, when you go for fundraising, right? Because you will you will often people think for a fundraising point of view that the people who are investing in your business are maybe already interested in cybersecurity only, but that's not always the case, right? Yeah, that's not always the case. So you might encounter an investor um, that actually doesn't have prior knowledge about what you do, but they know it's part of the future yes, and the yes, trend yes, is yes. increasing and they're very interested in understanding it. Yes, actually we have Investors from the hardware company, yeah. uh, uh, of course, the uh, security company. Also, we have uh, multiple in investors from with without or with or without the knowledge of cybersecurity, but they know that is the next step, and they know that is the that is the big issue for them. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so if people don't know what is we call the security in the edge computing, let's make an example. So what is actually a edge computing means? It means the computing process will not go onto your server, will not go onto the cloud. It means it is computing in the localized. For example, the autopilot in the Tesla will not go onto the cloud. It will directly computing in the Tesla. 
in the current computer, uh, computer. So imagine if that computer get hacked, which means hackers is easily he can it can destroy your autopilot system or he can even remote your car. It can hijack. It can even kidnap the drivers when they are in the car. So those are the really big issue, and it's already happened before. Oh, of course not Tesla, but already happened before. I hope not because I'm a proud Tesla owner. So please let me know if that happens. Oh, you're a Tesla <laughs> owner? <laughs> I am. <laughs> I will let you know. <laughs> let me know, please. <laughs> so those kind of are why we call, why we say the Azure Computing Security is really important because uh, most of the computing, they are not going to the cloud. So uh, some, some of the situation, the cloud is not, uh, is not really immediate. Uh, the cloud is not able to immediately control the Azure devices. It's harder to access Azure yes, devices yes, compared yes. to cloud computing, right? Yes. Okay. And okay, so. AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, they are much more powerful than Tesla car computer, right? Yeah. So, why should I attack them? I just attack your Tesla, let's say Exactly, now. that's more direct, right? Yep. And people will consider, okay, Tesla is a smart vehicle. Of course, it's got the easier, easier to, hack, to attack because yeah. it's a smart vehicle. Yeah. But that's not the truth. We can actually remote the regular vehicle too. Oh, yes. That, that, it's, got, it, it's on the, I mean, like, I, I don't want to say the brand, but no. it, uh, has, American it has happened before. Yeah, it's happened before. Okay. You so can, that's, that's kind of interesting then, because it seems that then there is a, a, lot, uh, a lot bigger need for a service such as the one Fiducia Edge offers hmm. than we may necessarily think. Because a lot of us, as you mentioned, tend to think about smart devices, uh, anything that has to do with things that are online. Hmm. So hmm. a lot of people will think like a general car or the ones we know as that are not smart cars, just a general car, hmm. that they won't be a, a victim of this kind of situation, but they may indeed also be. Oh, they will, they will. Okay. So that is that is quite interesting. I'm actually I know that Fiducia Edge is present in a Taiwanese market. Yep. What is your next step in terms of global expansion? So for the global expansion, actually we are now uh, now uh, developing the market in Japan and also the Euro company because they have GDPR. But in Euro company, we are most likely to, uh, so for, for uh, so far. We are mostly deploy the our technology through our customer, like the okay. I, so, company. so your your customer may be a large international corporation, mm -hmm. and then because they're yeah, present in different yep, locations, yep. then you get uh, an entry into those markets yeah, yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what is a market that you are not currently involved in, but is on the wish list for the next step to go? U.S. The U.S. Yeah, the U.S. So this is also encouragement, of course, to our viewers, but also any audience present here at Innovex. And also the South Asian country is what we are now South Asian. Yes. Is there any reason particular, because this is quite different. I mean, mm. of course, globally, we have, you know, seven continents and you're going for the US is, is given it's a big continent. Okay, but so South Asian market is often overlooked. So why are you targeting that? Because South Asian country in recent years, they are actually, uh, they are growing really fast and their, their city is, be becoming smarter and smarter, I mean the city itself, which means they have a lot of new kind of what we so-called the IoT solutions or the different smart city solutions. And a lot of those kind of solutions are actually provided by Taiwanese company. So that's why. Actually, that makes me wonder, you know, uh, looking at history in general, as I mentioned, Southeast mm. Asian, uh, countries are often overlooked in the, in the, as a target market for mm. this kind of service. What I find interesting is that you mentioned that they are actually developing quite fast recently. Do you also think that has to do with that they often take a backseat position, watch what the other countries do, and once that makes sense, they then catch up yeah, really course, fast? Of course, of course, of course. Because it seems to me that Taiwan, Japan, uh, South Korea, uh, the, these countries here, they are always very fast moving when it comes to implementing new technology. Mm. Then we have countries, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, uh, other Southeast Asian country who tends to move a little bit more cautious. But once they see that the solution actually works, they're not part of the first movement, but they are always very fast to catch up with the second because movement. Because they, they get simple, they don't need to try an error. Exactly, so of maybe course. they have also some <laughs> smart strategy. And, and actually, 
it's much more cheaper and much more uh, stabilized, uh, stable if, to buy a to buy a solution instead of develop yourself, invent yourself. So for them, it's easier to buy a Taiwanese uh, solutions or Japanese solutions, South Korea solutions, instead of just from start Doing from zero. Doing the research on their own. Yeah. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. I wanted to give you a final chance before we round off the interview today. Is mm. there, if you want to encourage our viewers at home or you want to encourage the, the visitors here at Innovex uh, to come find you, is there something specific you're looking for? Investors or uh, collaboration partners? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. So basically, Fiducia, we are now looking at uh, the agent in this different country and different uh, markets. And investor, so far we have just finished our pre-A round and congratulations yes, on that. Great. Yeah, thank you very much. So, but we are open with the investor, of course. But that is not the first priority. The first priority for the Fiducia Edge is will be the market expand and also the uh, the the way to ex export to other countries. That is what we are looking for, and of course, business. Thank you so much, Owen, for sharing that with us. Thank you very uh, much. Before we close up the round here today, I just want to encourage everyone. So no matter if you're a visitor here at Innovex 2023 or at Computex, if you're interested in, in, in talking to Fiducia Edge, Please come. they're Please present come. here at Innovex at the Taiwan Tech Arena Pavilion. But if you're not a visitor and you don't have the chance to visit them in person today, please feel free to look them up and contact them directly. Thank you so much, Owen, for joining us here today. And Thank this wraps our session for today's meeting TTA startups here at Innovex. Thank you for joining. Thank you.